Hey guys. Welcome to couple. Please like and subscribe if you like the video. On a chilly morning in December 2016, 12-year-old Bobby Lewis found himself sitting in a little room at the police station in Bill Platt, a town of 7,300 in southern Louisiana. He wasn't sure exactly how long it had been, but the detective grilling him had been at it for some time. Bobby was a middle school student a skinny kid with a polite demeanor and though he got in trouble at school from time to time, he wasn't used to getting treated like this. He was alone, facing the detective without a parent or a lawyer. A blank piece of paper sat on the table in front of Bobby. He and his friends were thieves, the detective insisted. They sold drugs. They trafficked guns. The detective brushed off Bobby's denials. She knew what he was up to, and if he didn't write it all down in form on his friends and confess to his crimes she'd charge him. She'd confiscate his dog, Cinnamon, she told him. She'd throw his mother in jail. Bobby was nothing but a B and an MF, as he later relayed the detective's words to me, sheepish about repeating them. When his mother finally turned up at the station house, it seemed only to enrage the detective further. Wipe that fucking smile off your face, and sit up in that fucking chair, Bobby, and his mother recalled the detective barking at him. Earlier that day, Bobby told me, he had been walking home from a friend's house when a police cruiser pulled up alongside him. He recognized one of the officers. Her name was Jessica Laborde, but like most people in Bill Platt, Bobby knew her only as Scrappy. The sobriquet was too fitting not to stick. Profanity prone in the extreme, Laborde was known for her tinderbox temper and hostile disposition. She styled herself like a marine drill sergeant, fastidiously pressed police blues, jet black hair pulled back tight and she would become Bobby's interrogator. Laborde did not respond to calls or a detailed list of questions about the incident. Somebody had put a rock through a window in one of the abandoned houses that litter Bill Platt, and a neighbor had seen three boys taking shelter from the rain under a carport nearby. But, the neighbor later told Bobby's mother, Charlotte Lewis, he didn't know which of the boys had thrown the rock. Bobby admitted he had been there but insisted he wasn't the culprit. Police need probable cause evidence sufficient to show there's a fair likelihood that a person committed a crime to take someone into custody. Generally, an officer can't detain somebody just because that person was near the scene of a crime. Mere propinquity, the US Supreme Court has written, does not, without more, give rise to probable cause. Whether Laborde didn't know that or didn't care, she ordered Bobby into the back of her squad car. Laborde didn't call Bobby's mother to tell her that her 12-year-old was in custody, according to a complaint Lewis later filed with the police department. But eventually another officer did. Lewis says she told the officer not to let anybody question her son until she got there. She had to wait out a morning downpour before she could walk to the station house. Lewis was familiar with Laborde's rough reputation. Still, she told me, she was shocked by how her son was treated. She cussed him out like he's a stray dog, she said. It's like my child is a convict or a criminal. After two hours of pressing Bobby fruitlessly, Laborde finally let him go but not before charging him with criminal mischief, police records show. A judge later dismissed the charge, Lewis told me, a friend admitted throwing the rock,